With a world economy that is dependent on imports and exports from country to country, large shipping fleets are essential for transporting a huge number of products. But cargo ships have their drawbacks. It's predicted that they contribute 3% of the global CO2 emissions, 9% of all the sulfur oxide emissions, and between 18 and 30% of all nitrous oxide emissions, which is not ideal to say the least. Now many solutions have been proposed, like enormous batteries, hydrogen storage and biofuels, but wherever I see the topic come up, there's always someone who likes to refer to the good old days, where the ultimate renewable energy source was used to power ships. And that is the wind. So is the answer really that simple? Let's take a look at some of the challenges and solutions when using wind power in the shipping industry. But firstly, I just want to say a massive thank you. The channel has reached over 10,000 subscribers, which was always my three year goal and we've hit it in nearer three months. So if you're not subscribed already and you enjoy this video, consider joining the channel and leaving a like. My interest in this topic first peaked when I saw a video of a new wind powered ship called the Ocean Bird in my newsfeed. So why did we move from wind power or sails in the first place? Well, in a world where time is money, the time saved from point to point shipping is very attractive to cargo companies. By using onboard motors for propulsion, ships are also less sensitive to changes in weather conditions out at sea. Point to point shipping generally means trying to follow the great circle route, which is the shortest distance between two points on a sphere. Sorry to all the flat earthers out there. However, with sailboats partially dependent on the wind direction, this isn't always possible. So the solution has generally been to try and get the best of both worlds, with a hybrid propulsion system that uses onboard motors and some kind of sail. The main methods for this are rotating cylinders, kites, and large aerofoils. Cylinders are placed vertically on the deck and spun using an electric motor to propel the ship. This works by redirecting the airflow of the wind as air on one side is accelerated and dragged around the cylinder, while it is slowed on the other side and creates a vortex. This redirection of airflow creates a pressure difference and propels the ship forward. This is called the Magnus effect and can even be seen in some aircraft models, though scaling it up has had limited success. One of the best examples of this in practice is by Norse Power who have reportedly reduced fuel consumptions by 8.2% during a year of shipping. However, like sails, this reduces the amount of usable space on the deck for cargo, but by a considerable amount less. Kites, on the other hand, take up much less space on the deck, flying well above the ship and pulling it forward. One of the most advanced kite systems for large cargo ships has been developed by a company called Sky Sails, whose inflatable kite flies between 100 and 300 meters above the sea level, where wind speeds are higher. This is because friction with the ocean surface slows down air that is closer to it, an effect known as the boundary layer. When the kite is in operation, an automatic control system keeps it flying at the most optimal angle, which helps to provide a 5% reduction in energy consumption when doing mixed routes, or around 12% for more favorable routes. And during the best conditions for the kite, it managed to provide 50% of the propulsion power for the 10,000 ton cargo ship it was attached to, called the MS Beluga Sky Sails. And finally we have aerofoils, which are the most similar to conventional sails out of the three technologies, and are what we saw on the Ocean Bird at the start of the video. If I'm honest, I'm quite skeptical of the claim that the Ocean Bird can cut shipping emissions by 90% especially when you compare this to the figures of the previous systems. There is also very limited technical information about the ocean wing available. However, a similar project born out of Tokyo University called the Wind Challenger can give us some insight. The airfalls on the boat are telescopic and work like the wings of a plane, redirecting the airflow to create a pressure difference and create lift. Interestingly, the optimal wind direction is actually from the side, as it enables all the aerofoils to be utilized. Whereas a tailwind means the four aerofoils act just like one. This system is yet to be implemented on a full-sized boat. However, simulations found that on the North American Great Circle route, the energy consumption can be reduced by 23%. And if a more optimal route for the wind is chosen, this could increase to 30% though I would expect their simulation data to be slightly more favourable than real-world results. 
So what is stopping these systems being implemented on more cargo ships? Well, some of the issues include the extra space these systems take up, and also their relative lack of maturity that makes them higher risk for shipping companies. However, the head of business development at SkySales had another interesting point. He said that ship owners, who have to make the investment, often don't pay for the fuel, as that's the charter's duty. The charter, on the other hand, doesn't charter the ship for long enough to make the carbon technologies pay for themselves. I'm not sure what this means for the future of wind-powered ships. I do think they have a place in the future of shipping, however, the business case for this needs to be ironed out. Despite claims by the Ocean Birds designers, it doesn't seem like wind can almost completely replace other propulsion methods due to the speed and accuracy required from modern shipping, though I would love to be proved wrong on that. Maybe hybrid systems with biofuels, onboard electrical energy generation and wind power can all be combined to clean up the shipping industry. But that's all from me, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like the video if you've enjoyed and subscribe with notifications on if you want to see more videos in the future. Thanks for watching.